Jesse here with Verdugo Adventures, and uh, I know that for a while now we've been telling everyone we're going to make a carp bait video. Um, I wanted to do some carp fishing, so here we go. Main ingredient is bread. We've got white bread. Uh, in the past we've used wheat bread and it worked just fine. Um, either way, works good. You don't want to use... Um, sourdough or anything like that. It's either white or wheat. Sourdough doesn't stay on the hook very well and it's got a different kind of smell to it. It just doesn't attract the, uh, the carp as well in my opinion. Um, okay, so then you're gonna need a, a cheap can of whole kernel sweet corn and uh, as you can see that's a dollar store can but works fine. You're gonna need either fresh garlic or minced garlic uh, minced garlic is probably going to be a little bit more expensive, but it's going to save you the time and effort of having to chop up very finely the fresh garlic. If you don't have some kind of uh, chopper, electric chopper or something like that, I recommend just getting minced garlic. Much easier, in fact, I have an electric chopper and it's just such a pain that uh, we switched to this and it works just fine. Creamy peanut butter. Could be the cheap stuff, could be the good stuff. In this case, we've got Skippy. Um, but in my opinion, you definitely want creamy peanut butter. The, uh, the whole kernels of uh, peanuts don't seem to stay on the hook very well, and it'll make your bait uh, just, just not as doughy. So you definitely want the creamy peanut butter. I've got a couple eggs here. I may or may not use them, depending on the thickness of the batch. Uh, but it can help uh, thicken up your batch of dough bait. Um, so it's good to have a couple eggs on hand. Corn muffin mix. Um, the carp love corn, and it also helps to thicken up the dough. Uh, take some of the moisture out of the dough, so uh, it's good to have a little bit of that on hand. And uh, last but not least is your flour. Definitely want to have some flour involved. It's what, what's going to make it an actual dough versus like a paste. Um, you want it doughy. The doughier the better. It's going to stay on the hook real well. Uh, and uh, you're going to add, add plenty of flour to your mix. And uh, oh yeah, don't forget the beer. If you're over 21, <laughs> Definitely throw a beer in there. <laughs> now for this, I've got a little pan. You know, don't go shy in the pan. The bigger, the better, because this stuff gets messy. Uh, you'll see in a second, it gets all over the place. So if you can get a big pan to make this in, it works good. And you're also going to have a, a mess on your hands, unless you want to use gloves, and I don't use gloves. Um, so, you know, you're going to want a sink nearby where you can wash your hands. Maybe even a towel or something. And uh, in fact, I've got a towel over here. So I'll probably keep that on hand too. Alright, so let's get started. Gonna get your bread out. I don't like using the end piece. Because this the crust, in my opinion, uh, is difficult to keep on the hook. You're mainly looking for the inner part of the bread. Now you don't want to throw all your bread in at once because if you put it all in at once you won't have any bread left to, to help thicken it up. And my daughter's going to make this video difficult probably. <laughs> so, so be aware of that. Charlotte AK Little Hook. <laughs> so what I do is I'll put maybe let's see We'll start out with five loaves of bread. Okay, I've already uh, poked a hole in this can. I don't use the entire whole kernels uh, because the kernels also don't stay on the hook very well. I find that the uh, the juice of the uh, the canned corn works just as well. 
So what I do is I poke a hole in the lid. Hopefully it's a good hole or else you'll be here forever trying to, uh, trying to soak your bread in it. And you want to just soak your bread. Now you don't want to over soak it because too much water Sometimes you just won't be able to use enough flour to, uh, to get all that moisture out, so. Another thing, if you don't have enough moisture, if there's not enough moisture in the can, enough water in the can, is you can use milk. Um, the guy who taught me how to make this actually used milk and whole, and he used whole kernels. What he did is he put the kernels in the blender. And that works fine as well. If you want to go through that, you know, be my guest. But in my opinion, the juice works just as good and you don't need any milk because the moisture of the, the canned, canned corn uh, does the job. And you can see that there's actually flakes of corn coming out as well. Alright, so looks like we've got enough juice on the bread. Okay, so you want to mash it up. And you can see five loaves of bread. Five pieces. Didn't the loaves, pieces, what oh five pieces of bread, excuse me. <laughs> Didn't really make a whole lot. And what I mean by not making a whole lot is you want to have enough dough bait here to not only put on your hook for the entire day, uh, but you want to be able to chum out a lot of bait as well because chumming in a specific location is going to draw your carp into you. Uh, once you get those carp all locked into one spot, you cast your bait right there and you're going to hook up continuously, uh, possibly all day long, depending on where you're at. All right, so we're going to throw another piece of bread in there. Right now, the mixture is way too moist, but that's okay because we've got other ingredients here to thicken it up. Okay. And then, so like I said, your hands are going to get Disgusting. <laughs> no way around it. Okay. What I also need, and I forgot to say, is you're going to need a butter knife for the peanut butter and you're going to need probably spoon a spoon for the, garlic? for the minced garlic. You want to go grab that? Yeah, it'll probably just pour out. It's okay. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, we're back. I've got the the, uh, the skippy open. I've got the minced garlic open. Ooh, I can smell the garlic from here. The garlic's Ooh. really strong. Um, I've got a butter knife for the peanut butter. So right off the bat. Just use a knife from the peanut butter. No, that's okay. We'll add a little bit of garlic. Okay. Give that a shot. Mix it up. Got tired of using my hands, I guess. Charlotte's uh, <laughs> looking here. And this garlic is really, really strong. I just used a little bit. This is stuff pretty strong. Okay. Use a little bit more. I usually, when I use a, uh, a whole garlic, I'll use probably two of them in one batch. Two cloves? Two cloves of garlic. So we've got that. Okay. And this peanut butter, we're near the end of the jar. I'm not too worried about it, so I'll go like this. Hey, 
and what the peanut butter does is not only helps thicken up the dough bait, but the carp are attracted to oil scents. The, the oil and the peanut butter will actually leave a trail in the water and the carp will follow that trail. So you definitely want peanut butter. Um, in other cases I've used vegetable oil as well to, uh, to give that oily substance in the dough bait. When it hits the water you'll actually see a little bit of oil hit the water as well and that oil will spread out just like um, other kinds of bait that you would use for trout or, or salmon or whatever and uh, it works good. Okay, so I'll mix that up. And the peanut butter really helps thicken this stuff up too. Nice and sticky. Nice and sticky. Okay, now, the other thing about this bait is a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just use white bread or wheat bread, you know, just put the bread directly on the hook. And we do that sometimes when we're real lazy and it works. The problem is, is that it doesn't taste as good, in my opinion, to the carp. And they don't hold on to it as long. If you're using a, a sliding sinker, for instance, or, or a floating bobber, when they grab that bait, they won't hold on to it as long. I've tested this out. When they grab this bait, they hold on to it. I mean, they, they, it's like them eating a hamburger or something. They take <laughs> off with it, and they don't want to let go of it. And it gives you plenty of time to set the hook, and, uh, and get a clean hook set on the fish and uh, land some big carp. If you use uh, white bread or wheat bread, um, like I said, you will get bites on it. The problem is that I find is they'll grab it and they'll play with it. They won't, it's like almost like they, they'll, it's edible to them, but they don't like it as much. And if they feel any tension on the line or anything, they're like, eh, and they let it go. So the whole point of this bait is to get those carp to hold on to that bait and hook as long as possible. Okay, I've got that mixed up pretty good. Okay. We're going to use some more bread because I want more bait. Like I said, I've got another end piece here. And we'll save one bread for thickening. But definitely going to use some more bread here. And you may need to add some more moisture if your if your uh, mix isn't good. I've even used lake water on the fly to make this stuff, and it worked. But in my opinion, corn is. Is definitely something that you gotta add into the mix. Don't be afraid to dig in there with your yeah, hands. Yeah, <laughs> it's jacked up. So it's kind of like playing with real sticky play-doh, <laughs> except it's, it doesn't come off your hands very easy. Get up in there. Yeah. If you guys hear any uh, weird sounds, I have a parrot right here and he talks. Hi, Cisco. Hi. Hi. Can you say hi? Say hi. 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 <laughs> All right, back to the cart. Yeah, 
hand, so this stuff is really stuck on my hand. So let me show you guys how to fix that. Gotta add flour. Flour helps take some of the stickiness out of your bait. If it's too sticky, it's gonna be very unpleasant to work with. So what you wanna do is have it more like a like pizza dough or bread dough in the end. And when it hits that water, it doughs right back up. So having it not so sticky is okay. Sometimes you'll put it on the hook and dip it in the water a little bit and it'll help it tack up before you cast. Okay, so now, as you can see, just adding that little bit of flour, it's starting to stick into a ball now. It's still pretty stuck on my hand, so maybe I'll use a little bit of corn, corn muffin mix, or uh, basically for making uh, cornbread. And that doesn't work as good as flour, but I like adding a little bit because, like I said, it's got that corn in it. All right, we're back. I had to uh, put my parrot back in his cage as he was just uh, yapping up a storm. <laughs> okay. So, we're starting to build a texture to this dough now. As you can see, it's one ball. The problem is, is it's still very sticky. So, the two ingredients that you need to use when you've got this problem, let me cap this real quick, is flour and more bread. Since I want more bait, I'm going to use more bread first off. If you don't want more bait, then use more flour. And it's that moisture that makes it sticky. So what you're doing by adding the bread and the flowers, neutralizing that moisture. Now remember, I'm not making a boily here. When I'm done with my bread, I'm basically going to put it in the freezer for maybe half an hour to an hour and then go use it. I'm not going to boil it or... Or put it in the oven. Put it in the oven or nothing like that. I've never had to do that and, you know, never wanted to do that. It's just too much. Even sometimes to me this is too much, but this is really the best way to catch carp, in my opinion. Okay, so it's starting to tack up a little bit. But now, I'm going to use flour. One last thing too, the egg is something that I always put on the table, but I don't always use it, depending on how much bread I have uh, and how much other ingredients I have, I don't always use it. It'll, it kind of does what the peanut butter does, and it, it also helps to uh, add moisture to it, but Right now, I don't want any more moisture, and it's not going to hurt the batch by leaving it out, so I'm not going to add it. Some cases you may need to for more, uh, more moisture or uh, more, oil, more of an oily dough bait, but I'm not going to add it. All right. Need a lot of flour. And you can add a lot of flour because whatever doesn't stick in the in the bait is gonna get left behind in the bowl, so it's not really a big deal. And once it hits that water, like I said, the flour kind of neutralizes and it becomes sticky again. You got a little bread thief. She took 
frosting my bread. <laughs> Can't have that, Mamas. The corn muffin mix, you don't want to add a whole lot of that corn muffin mix to it. And it, and it doesn't replace the flour. Because it's real grainy. And if you add too much, it will actually keep your bait from sticking on your hook very well. And obviously the, the texture that we're looking for is basically a power power bait type texture. We want it to be we want it to have the same texture as power bait. So think of that when you're when you're looking for a final product. It's getting very very close. Smell it. It smells kind of peanut buttery and garlicky. Those are the two most overwhelming smells coming off of this dough right now. And carp love it. And that's pretty much what you want. In other words, it's strong. You want it to be pretty strong. Okay, we're going to use just a little bit more flour and I think we'll be done. Alright. You know, we've actually uh, had uh, dozens of people offer uh, to buy this off of us, but you know what, uh, we decided, you know, why not just share it with everyone? It's looking good. Yeah, it's coming along. If you use two hands, it might go a lot faster. No, I'm... Don't want to get dirty? Yeah, I need one <laughs> clean hand here. <laughs> Actually, though, it's getting to the point where I can use two hands because it's not as not as sticky. By working it here, I'm making sure that that flour is completely mixed in, and all the other ingredients are are. Uh, how and uh, how long will uh, this much uh, bait last somebody on average? Probably it'll last me and you together two or three fishing trips. Right, it's pretty good. And as far as ingredients cost, you're looking at about five bucks. We well, use, not if you use Skippy peanut butter. Well, Skippy peanut butter is a little bit more expensive. You can go to the dollar store and get all this stuff. So you go yeah. get yourself a dollar can of creamy peanut butter. Get yourself probably a dollar can of minced garlic, if not, that may be the most expensive ingredient. You can go get yourself some cheap dollar white bread. Go in your cupboard and grab some flour, eggs, a dollar can of corn. So dollar, 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 dollar. You know, you're probably looking at about five, six bucks for. And I, we actually only use less than half a loaf of bread. I mean, this is half a loaf of bread, so you can think about a full loaf of bread if you wanted to spend a whole dollar bag of bread in there. You know, you'd have enough bait for probably a week or so for, uh, you know, six, seven bucks. And it's definitely worth it. And if you find yourself a good carp hole, trust me, you'll be making more of it because you hook into a 15, 20 pound carp, and you're going to be pretty happy let alone hooking into something way bigger than that, which we have before. 
You know, the, the biggest one I've landed so far was about 17 pounds. The and video is uh, up under our uh, park section. But carp are, are ranging all the way up in California out here, probably up to about 50 pounds. Maybe even 60 pounds if you can land them. They're very hardy, strong fighting fish that don't generally uh, give up very easily. Not like a trout where you know you wear them out and they they burn out, or like a largemouth bass or something where they give you a couple rolls and a couple jumps and then they die out and you drag them in. Carp, they'll keep on fighting you for. You hook into a big one, you may fight it for a half an hour on light line. Shoot, we're pretty much done here. Tank, it's okay, boy. Somebody's at my door, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's our fishing dog, Tank. He's freaking out. <laughs> All right, so that's what you have. Your main, at the end, you just want to play with it because it feels like Play-Doh, you know? <laughs> but that's what you have at the end. Now, I recommend before you... Look at this, though. No, no mess on my hands, either. Nothing. Before you head out to the lake, I recommend putting it in the freezer for about an hour. We Inside a Ziploc container, yeah, not on its own. A little either Ziploc bag or, or even better, like a little uh, Tupperware container. Uh, put it in the freezer for about an hour, and it's going to make it real thick, and uh, it's going to be much easier to put on your hook. Tell them uh, what size your, hooks uh, we use for carp. For your duration. Um, recommended size six hooks. Eagle claw leaders. We use Eagle Claw leaders because they're cheap. If you're into making your own leaders or whatever, just, just stick to a size 6. Um, it's the most well-rounded hook for uh, not only the size of a carp's mouth, but um, the size of bait that you're going to be wanting, wanting to use um, to, to be able to keep your bait on the hook. Um, some people will use treble hooks and things like that to try to keep this stuff on. But we do catch them. If you it. make it properly, you won't need a treble hook, and uh, treble hooks are going to make it extremely difficult to uh, catch and release carp. And you know we're not going to bring any carp home to eat. Uh, maybe some people will. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. The guy, in fact, who taught us, uh, basically, we, and we've changed this recipe up a little bit through trial and error. But uh, the guy who basically taught us how to make this stuff. He was a, like a Russian dude. He didn't even really speak any English. And he, he made this stuff specifically to catch and keep. He brought home all his carp. And he, man, that guy used to catch monsters. On Dan the Man, his name is. We used to call him Dan the Man, older guy. And, uh, you know, we were watching him one day. I think we were either out there with bread or corn. And we said, man, why are you getting so many more bites and landing so many more fish than us? And so he gave us, like like a chunk like that, he goes, here, try it out. And we just started destroying them right there next to him. And uh, then we realized, you know, you've got to put a little bit more effort into your bait to, to land more fish. So that's when we started making this stuff. All right, that's about it. I'm going to put it in the, uh, put it in a Ziploc container, put it in the freezer. And go fishing. Pretty good adventures. That's our carp bait right there. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, like it and uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to us. You can also befriend us on Facebook at Verdugo Fishing.